In physical geography, a dune is a hill of loose sand built by aeolian processes wind or the flow of water. Dunes occur in different shapes and sizes, formed by interaction with the flow of air or water. Most kinds of dunes are longer on the stoss upflow side, where the sand is pushed up the dune, and have a shorter slip face in the lee side. The valley or trough between dunes is called a slack. An erg or sand sea is a large broad, flat area covered with wind-swept sand and or dunes with little or no vegetation. Smaller areas are called dune fields. Dunes occur in some deserts, inland and along some coasts. Some coastal areas have one or more sets of dunes running parallel to the shoreline directly inland from the beach. In most cases, the dunes are important in protecting the land against potential ravages by storm waves from the sea. Although the most widely distributed dunes are those associated with coastal regions, the largest complexes of dunes are found inland in dry regions and associated with ancient lake or sea beds. Dunes can form under the action of water flow fluvial processes, and on sand or gravel beds of rivers, estuaries and the seabed. The modern word, dune, came into English from French around 1790, which in turn came from Middle Dutch dune. Formation Dunes are made of sand-sized particles, and may consist of quartz, calcium carbonate, snow, gypsum, or other materials. The upwind, upstream, upcurrent side of the dune is called the stoss side, the downflow side is called the lee side. Sand is pushed creep or bounces saltation up the stoss side, and slides down the lee side. A side of a dune that the sand has slid down is called a slip face or slip face. The Bagnold formula gives the speed at which particles can be transported. Aeolian dunes Aeolian dune shapes Five basic dune types are recognized, crescentic, linear, star, dome, and parabolic. Dune areas may occur in three forms, simple isolated dunes of basic type, compound larger dunes on which smaller dunes of same type form, and complex combinations of different types. Barchan or crescentic Barchan dunes are crescent-shaped mounds which are generally wider than they are long. The lee side slipfaces are on the concave sides of the dunes. These dunes form under winds that blow consistently from one direction unimodal winds. They form separate crescents when the sand supply is comparatively small. When the sand supply is greater, they may merge into barchanoid ridges, and then transverse dunes see below. Some types of crescentic dunes move more quickly over desert surfaces than any other type of dune. A group of dunes moved more than 100 meters per year between 1954 and 1959 in China's Ningxia province, and similar speeds have been recorded in the western desert of Egypt. The largest crescentic dunes on Earth, with mean crest-to-crest -crest widths of more than 3 km, are in China's Taklamakan Desert, see lunettes and parabolic dunes, below, for dunes similar to crescent-shaped ones. <laughs> Transverse dunes Abundant barchan dunes may merge into barchanoid ridges, which then grade into linear or slightly sinuous transverse dunes, so called because they lie transverse, or across, the wind direction, with the wind blowing perpendicular to the ridge crest. <laughs> Safe or longitudinal dunes Safe dunes are linear or slightly sinuous dunes with two slip faces. 
The two slip faces make them sharp crested. They are called safe dunes after the Arabic word for sword. They may be more than 160 kilometers, 100 miles long and thus easily visible in satellite images. See illustrations. Safe dunes are associated with bidirectional winds. The long axes and ridges of these dunes extend along the resultant direction of sand movement, hence the name longitudinal. Some linear dunes merge to form Y-shaped compound dunes. Formation is debated. Bagnold, in the physics of blown sand and desert dunes, suggested that some safe dunes form when a barchan dune moves into a bidirectional wind regime, and one arm or wing of the crescent elongates. Others suggest that safe dunes are formed by vortices in a unidirectional wind. In the sheltered troughs between highly developed safe dunes, barchans may be formed, because the wind is constrained to be unidirectional by the dunes. Safe dunes are common in the Sahara. They range up to 300 meters (980 feet) in height and 300 kilometers (190 miles) in length. In the southern third of the Arabian Peninsula, a vast erg called the Rub al or Empty Quarter contains safe dunes that stretch for almost 200 kilometers and reach heights of over 300 meters. Linear Loess hills known as pahas are superficially similar. These hills appear to have been formed during the last ice age under permafrost conditions dominated by sparse tundra vegetation. Topic. Star Radially symmetrical, star dunes are pyramidal sand mounds with slipfaces on three or more arms that radiate from the high center of the mound. They tend to accumulate in areas with multidirectional wind regimes. Star dunes grow upward rather than laterally. They dominate the Grand Erg Oriental of the Sahara. In other deserts, they occur around the margins of the sand seas, particularly near topographic barriers. In the southeast Badain Jaran Desert of China, the star dunes are up to 500 meters tall and may be the tallest dunes on Earth. Dome Oval or circular mounds that generally lack a slip face. Dome dunes are rare and occur at the far upwind margins of sand seas. Topic. Lunettes Fixed crescentic dunes that form on the leeward margins of playas and river valleys in arid and semi-arid regions in response to the directions of prevailing winds, are known as lunettes, source bordering dunes, borlays and clay dunes. They may be composed of clay, silt, sand, or gypsum, eroded from the basin floor or shore, transported up the concave side of the dune, and deposited on the convex side. Examples in Australia are up to 6.5 km long, 1 km wide, and up to 50 m high. They also occur in southern and west Africa, and in parts of the western United States, especially Texas. Topic. Parabolic U-shaped mounds of sand with convex noses trailed by elongated arms are parabolic dunes. These dunes are formed from blowout dunes where the erosion of vegetated sand leads to a U-shaped depression. The elongated arms are held in place by vegetation, the largest arm known on Earth reaches 12 km. Sometimes these dunes are called U-shaped, blowout, or hairpin dunes, and they are well known in coastal deserts. Unlike crescent-shaped dunes, their crests point upwind. The bulk of the sand in the dune migrates forward. In plan view, these are U-shaped or V-shaped mounds of well-sorted, very fine to medium sand with elongated arms that extend upwind behind the central part of the dune. There are slip faces that often occur on the outer side of the nose and on the outer slopes of the arms. 
These dunes often occur in semi-arid areas where the precipitation is retained in the lower parts of the dune and underlying soils. The stability of the dunes was once attributed to the vegetative cover but recent research has pointed to water as the main source of parabolic dune stability. The vegetation that covers them—grasses, shrubs, and trees—help anchor the trailing arms. In inland deserts, parabolic dunes commonly originate and extend downwind from blowouts in sand sheets only partly anchored by vegetation. They can also originate from beach sands and extend inland into vegetated areas in coastal zones and on shores of large lakes. Most parabolic dunes do not reach heights higher than a few tens of meters except at their nose, where vegetation stops or slows the advance of accumulating sand. Simple parabolic dunes have only one set of arms that trail upwind, behind the leading nose. Compound parabolic dunes are coalesced features with several sets of trailing arms. Complex parabolic dunes include subsidiary superposed or coalesced forms, usually of barchinoid or linear shapes. Parabolic dunes, like crescent dunes, occur in areas where very strong winds are mostly unidirectional. Although these dunes are found in areas now characterized by variable wind speeds, the effective winds associated with the growth and migration of both the parabolic and crescent dunes probably are the most consistent in wind direction. The grain size for these well-sorted, very fine to medium sands is about 0.06 to 0.5 mm. Parabolic dunes have loose sand and steep slopes only on their outer flanks. The inner slopes are mostly well packed and anchored by vegetation, as are the corridors between individual dunes. Because all dune arms are oriented in the same direction, and, the inter-dune corridors are generally swept clear of loose sand, the corridors can usually be traversed in between the trailing arms of the dune. However to cross straight over the dune by going over the trailing arms, can be very difficult. Also, traversing the nose is very difficult as well because the nose is usually made up of loose sand without much if any vegetation. A type of extensive parabolic dune that lacks discernible slipfaces and has mostly coarse grain sand is known as a zabar. The term zabar comes from the Arabic word to describe rolling transverse ridges with a hard surface. The dunes are small, have low relief, and can be found in many places across the planet from Wyoming United States to Saudi Arabia to Australia. Spacing between zabars ranges from 50 to 400 meters and they don't become more than 10 meters high. The dunes form at about 90 degrees to the prevailing wind which blows away the small, fine grain sand leaving behind the coarser grain sand to form the crest. <inaudible> Reversing dunes Occurring wherever winds periodically reverse direction, reversing dunes are varieties of any of the above shapes. These dunes typically have major and minor slipfaces oriented in opposite directions. The minor slipfaces are usually temporary, as they appear after a reverse wind and are generally destroyed when the wind next blows in the dominant direction. <laughs> Draws Draws are very large scale dune bedforms, they may be tens or a few hundreds of meters in height, kilometers wide, and hundreds of kilometers in length. After a DRAA has reached a certain size, it generally develops superimposed dune forms. They are thought to be more ancient and slower moving than smaller dunes, and to form by vertical growth of existing dunes. Draws are widespread in sand seas and are well represented in the geological record. Dune complexity 
All these dune shapes may occur in three forms, simple isolated dunes of basic type, compound logger dunes on which smaller dunes of same type form, and complex combinations of different types. Simple dunes are basic forms with the minimum number of slip faces that define the geometric type. Compound dunes are large dunes on which smaller dunes of similar type and slip face orientation are superimposed. Complex dunes are combinations of two or more dune types. A crescentic dune with a star dune superimposed on its crest is the most common complex dune. Simple dunes represent a wind regime that has not changed in intensity or direction since the formation of the dune, while compound and complex dunes suggest that the intensity and direction of the wind has changed. Topic. Dune movement The sand mass of dunes can move either windward or leeward, depending on if the wind is making contact with the dune from below or above its apogee. If wind hits from above, the sand particles move leeward. If sand hits from below, sand particles move windward. The leeward flux of sand is greater than the windward flux. Further, when the wind carrying sand particles when it hits the dune, the dune's sand particles will saltate more than if the wind had hit the dune without carrying sand particles. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Coastal dunes. Coastal dunes form when wet sand is deposited along the coast and dries out and is blown along the beach. Dunes form where the beach is wide enough to allow for the accumulation of wind-blown sand, and where prevailing onshore winds tend to blow sand inland. The three key ingredients for coastal dune formation are a large sand supply, winds to move said sand supply, and a place for the sand supply to accumulate. Obstacles—for example, vegetation, pebbles and so on tend to slow down the wind and lead to the deposition of sand grains. These small, incipient dunes or shadow dunes tend to grow in the vertical direction if the obstacle slowing the wind can also grow vertically i.e., vegetation. Coastal dunes expand laterally as a result of lateral growth of coastal plants via seed or rhizome. Models of coastal dunes suggest that their final equilibrium height is related to the distance between the water line and where vegetation can grow. Coastal dunes can be classified by where they develop, or begin to take shape. Dunes are commonly grouped into either the primary dune group or the secondary dune group. Primary dunes gain most of their sand from the beach itself, while secondary dunes gain their sand from the primary dune. Along the Florida Panhandle, most dunes are considered to be fordunas or hummocks. Different locations around the globe have dune formations unique to their given coastal profile. Coastal sand dunes can provide privacy and or habitats to support local flora and fauna. Animals such as sand snakes, lizards, and rodents can live in coastal sand dunes, along with insects of all types. Often the vegetation of sand dunes is discussed without acknowledging the importance that coastal dunes have for animals. Further, some animals, such as foxes and feral pigs can use coastal dunes as hunting grounds to find food. Birds are also known to utilize coastal dunes as nesting grounds. All these species find the coastal environment of the sand dune vital to their species survival. Over the course of time coastal dunes may be impacted by tropical cyclones or other intense storm activity, dependent on their location. Recent work has suggested that coastal dunes tend to evolve toward a high or low morphology depending on the growth rate of dunes relative to storm frequency. During a storm event, dunes play a significant role in minimizing wave energy as it moves onshore. As a result, coastal dunes, especially those in the Fordun area affected by a storm surge, will retreat or erode. 
To counteract the damage from tropical activity on coastal dunes, short-term post-storm efforts such as fences can be made by individual agencies through fencing to help with sand accumulation. How a much a dune erodes during any storm event is related to its location on the coastal shoreline and the profile of the beach during a particular season. During the summer, a beach tends to take on more of a convex appearance due to gentler waves, while the same beach in the winter may take on more of a concave appearance. As a result, coastal dunes can erode much more quickly in the winter than in the summer. Topic: <laughs> Ecological succession on coastal dunes. As a dune forms, plant succession occurs. The conditions on an embryo dune are harsh, with salt spray from the sea carried on strong winds. The dune is well drained and often dry, and composed of calcium carbonate from seashells. Rotting seaweed, brought in by storm waves adds nutrients to allow pioneer species to colonize the dune. These pioneer species are marum grass, sea wart grass and other sea grasses in the United Kingdom. These plants are well adapted to the harsh conditions of the fordun. Typically having deep roots which reach the water table, root nodules that produce nitrogen compounds, and protected stoma, reducing transpiration. Also, the deep roots bind the sand together, and the dune grows into a fordun as more sand is blown over the grasses. The grasses add nitrogen to the soil, meaning other, less hardy plants can then colonize the dunes. Typically these are heather, heaths and gorses. These two are adapted to the low soil water content and have small, prickly leaves which reduce transpiration. Heather adds humus to the soil and is usually replaced by coniferous trees, which can tolerate low soil pH, caused by the accumulation and decomposition of organic matter with nitrate leaching. Coniferous forests and heathland are common climax communities for sand dune systems. Young dunes are called yellow dunes and dunes which have high humus content are called gray dunes. Leaching occurs on the dunes, washing humus into the slacks, and the slacks may be much more developed than the exposed tops of the dunes. It is usually in the slacks that more rare species are developed and there is a tendency for the dune slacks soil to be waterlogged and where only marsh plants can survive. In Europe these plants include, creeping willow, cotton grass, yellow iris, reeds, and rushes. As for vertebrates in European dunes, natterjack toads sometimes breed here. Topic: <inaudible> Coastal dune floral adaptations. Dune ecosystems are extremely difficult places for plants to survive. This is due to a number of pressures related to their proximity to the ocean and confinement to growth on sandy substrates. These include Little available soil moisture Little available soil organic matter, nutrients Harsh winds Salt spray Erosion, shifting and sometimes ephemeral substrate Tidal influences There are many adaptations plants have evolved to cope with these pressures Deep taproot to reach water table pink sand verbena Shallow but extensive root systems Prostrate growth form to avoid wind, salt spray Abronia spp, beach primrose Crumholes growth form Monterey cypress not a dune plant but deals with similar pressures. Thickened cuticle, succulents to reduce moisture loss and reduce salt uptake Ambrosia, Abronia spp, Calistegia soldonella Pale leaves to reduce insulation Artemisia, Ambrosia spp. Thorny, spiky seeds to ensure establishment in vicinity of parent, reduces chances of being blown away or swept out to sea Ambrosia commissonis. <laughs> Nabca dunes A napka, or coppice dune, is a small dune anchored by vegetation. 
They usually indicate desertification or soil erosion, and serve as nesting and burrow sites for animals. Subaqueous dunes Subaqueous underwater dunes form on a bed of sand or gravel under the actions of water flow. They are ubiquitous in natural channels such as rivers and estuaries, and also form in engineered canals and pipelines. Dunes move downstream as the upstream slope is eroded and the sediment deposited on the downstream or lee slope in typical bedform construction. In the case of subaqueous barchan dunes, sediment is lost by their extremities, known as horns. These dunes most often form as a continuous train of dunes, showing remarkable similarity in wavelength and height. The shape of a dune gives information about its formation environment. For instance, rivers produce asymmetrical ripples, with the steeper slip face facing downstream. Ripple marks preserved in sedimentary strata in the geological record can be used to determine the direction of current flow, and thus an indication of the source of the sediments. Dunes on the bed of a channel significantly increase flow resistance, their presence and growth playing a major part in river flooding. Topic. Lithified dunes A lithified consolidated sand dune is a type of sandstone that is formed when a marine or aeolian sand dune becomes compacted and hardened. Once in this form, water passing through the rock can carry and deposit minerals, which can alter the color of the rock. Cross-bedded layers of stacks of lithified dunes can produce the cross-hatching patterns, such as those seen in the Zion National Park in the western United States. A slang term, used in the southwest U.S., for consolidated and hardened sand dunes is, slickrock, a name that was introduced by pioneers of the Old West because their steel-rimmed wagon wheels could not gain traction on the rock. Topic. Desertification Sand dunes can have a negative impact on humans when they encroach on human habitats. Sand dunes move via a few different means, all of them helped along by wind. One way that dunes can move is by saltation, where sand particles skip along the ground like a bouncing ball. When these skipping particles land, they may knock into other particles and cause them to move as well, in a process known as creep. With slightly stronger winds, particles collide in midair, causing sheet flows. In a major dust storm, dunes may move tens of meters through such sheet flows. Also as in the case of snow, sand avalanches, falling down the slip face of the dunes, that face away from the winds, also move the dunes forward. Sand threatens buildings and crops in Africa, the Middle East, and China. Drenching sand dunes with oil stops their migration, but this approach is quite destructive to the dunes' animal habitats and uses a valuable resource. Sand fences might also slow their movement to a crawl, but geologists are still analyzing results for the optimum fence designs. Preventing sand dunes from overwhelming towns, villages, and agricultural areas has become a priority for the United Nations Environment Programme. Planting dunes with vegetation also helps to stabilize them. Conservation <inaudible> 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 Dune habitats provide niches for highly specialized plants and animals, including numerous rare species and some endangered species. Due to widespread human population expansion, dunes face destruction through land development and recreational usages, as well as alteration to prevent the encroachment of sand onto inhabited areas. Some countries, notably the United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, and Sri Lanka have developed significant programs of dune protection through the use of sand dune stabilization. 
In the UK, a biodiversity action plan has been developed to assess dunes loss and to prevent future dunes destruction. Topic: Examples. Topic: Africa. Alexandria Coastal Dunefields, in the Eastern Cape, South Africa Whitsand Nature Reserve in the Kalahari Desert, South Africa The White Dunes of Dehoop Nature Reserve, South Africa The Dunes of the Suguta Valley, a desert part of the Great Rift Valley in northwestern Kenya The Dunes of the Donakil Depression, northeastern Ethiopia toward the border with Eritrea the dunes of Sasis Flay in the Greater Namib Nakluft National Park, Namibia. The coastal dunes of Iona National Park in the southwesternmost part of Angola. Kawa Dunes in the Kegalagadi Transfrontier Park, the southwesternmost part of Botswana. La Dune Rose in the city of Gao in northern Mali near the Niger River. Ergeoukur in southeastern Mauritania extending into Mali. Erg Chech in southwestern Algeria and northern Mali Erg Chebi and Erg Chigaga in southern Morocco Grand Erg Oriental in northeastern Algeria and southern Tunisia Grand Erg Occidental in western Algeria The Idian Ubari and the Idian Merzuk in southwestern Libya The Coralijo Dunes in the Canary Islands, Spain the Rebiana Sand Sea in southeastern Libya The Great Sand Sea in southeastern Libya and southwestern Egypt The Salima Sand Sheet in northwestern Sudan The Dunes of the Bayuda Desert in northern Sudan The Dunes of the Lampul Desert in northwestern Senegal The Coastal Dunes of Bazaruto Island, Mozambique Erg du Jorab in northern Chad the dunes of the Mordi Depression in northeastern Chad The dunes of Tin Tuma Desert, in southeastern Niger Grand Erg de Bilma in the Tanire, in northern Niger The dunes of Our Sea in the Sahel region, northern Burkina Faso Tanzania's shifting sands near Olduvai Gorge Asia. The dunes in the Thar Desert in India and Pakistan. Totora Sand Dunes, Totora Prefecture, Japan. Rig E Gen in the Central Desert of Iran. Rig E Lut in the southeast of Iran. The Ilocos Norte Sand Dunes in the Philippines, particularly Paoay Sand Dunes. Morib Dune in Liwa Oasis, United Arab Emirates, used as an arena for drag motor sports and sandboarding. Gumuk Pasir Parangkusumo near Parang Tritus Beach in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Mui Ne, Vietnam. Wahiba Sands, Oman. Terry, Red Dune Complex in southern India. The dunes of the Taklamakan Desert in southwest Xinjiang in northwest China. Topic. Europe The dunes of Diouni, near Pomori, Bulgaria, vast area of sand dunes in the Burgas province The dune of Pilat, not far from Bordeaux, France, is the largest known sand dune in Europe The dunes of Piscinas, in the southwest of Sardinia Island Sands of Forvi within the Wythan Estuary Complex, Aberdeenshire, Scotland Oxwich Dunes, near Swansea, is on the Gower Peninsula in Wales. Winterton Dunes, Norfolk, England Slowinski National Park, Poland Akrotiri Sand Dune, Lemesos, Cyprus Raberg Mile, Northern Jutland, Denmark Thy National Park, North Denmark Region, Denmark Dunes of Corobedo, Spain Northern Littoral Natural Park, Portugal 
São Jacinto Dunes Natural Reserve, Portugal. Rara e Hedor in Shungen, Albania. Hoge Velu National Park, Velu, Netherlands. Dunes of Texel National Park, Texel, Netherlands. Zuid Kenemerland National Park, North Holland, Netherlands. Amathenes Lemnu, Lemnos, Greece. Dunes of the Curonian Spit, Lithuania and Russia. Topic: North America. Herring Cove, Race Point and the Province Lands Bicycle Path in Provincetown, Massachusetts as part of the U.S. National Park Service of the Cape Cod National Seashore. Great Kobuk Sand Dunes, the northernmost sand dunes in the world, Kobuk Valley National Park, Alaska. The Athabasca Sand Dunes, located in the Athabasca Sand Dunes Provincial Park, Saskatchewan. The Cadiz Dunes in the Mojave Trails National Monument in California. The Kelso Dunes in the Mojave Desert of California. Eureka Valley Sand Dunes and Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes in Death Valley National Park, California. Great Sand Dunes National Park, Colorado. White Sands National Monument, New Mexico. Little Sahara Recreation Area, Utah. Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, Michigan, on the east shore of Lake Michigan. Indiana Dunes National Park, Indiana, on the south shore of Lake Michigan. Warren Dunes State Park, Michigan, on the east shore of Lake Michigan. Grand Sable Dunes, in the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, Michigan. Samalayuca Dunes, in the state of Chihuahua, Mexico. Algodones Dunes near Brawley, California. Guadalupe Napomo Dunes, on the central coast of California. Monahan's Sandhills State Park near Odessa, Texas. Beaver Dunes State Park near Beaver, Oklahoma. The Kilpecker Sand Dunes of the Red Desert in southwestern Wyoming. Jockeys Ridge State Park, on the Outer Banks, North Carolina. The Great Dune found in Cape Henlopen State Park in Lewis, Delaware. Oregon Dunes National Recreation Area near Florence, Oregon, on the Pacific Coast. Breno Dunes State Park, Owyhee Desert, Idaho. Hoffmaster State Park, Muskegon, Michigan. Silver Lake State Park. A sand dunes that allows off-road vehicle use located in Mears, Michigan. Topic. South America Lençóis Maranhenses National Park in the state of Maranhão, Brazil Jericoacoara National Park, in the state of Sira, Brazil Genapabu in Natal, Brazil Medanos de Coro National Park near the town of Coro, in Falcon State, Venezuela Duna Federico Curbis in Catamarca Province, Argentina. Villa Gesell in Buenos Aires Province, Argentina. Cerro Blanco in Nazca Province, Peru. Jucachina in Ica Region, Peru. Cerro Medinoso in Atacama Region, Chile. Colón Beach, Valdivian Coastal Reserve in Chile. Topic. Oceania Simpson Desert Sand Dunes in the Northern Territory, Queensland and South Australia, Australia Fraser Island in Queensland, Australia Cronulla Sand Dunes in New South Wales, Australia Stockton Beach in New South Wales, Australia Te Paki Sand Dunes near Cape Rayanga, New Zealand Topic. World's highest dunes Topic. Sand dune systems 
Coastal Dunes featuring Succession Athabasca Sand Dunes Provincial Park, Alberta and Saskatchewan Ashdod Sand Dune, Palestine Bambara Dunes, Northumberland, England Bradley Beach, New Jersey Circeo National Park, a Mediterranean dune area on the southwest coast of the Lazio region of Italy Cronulla Sand Dunes, NSW, Australia Crimlin Burrows, Wales Dawlish Warren, Devon, England Fraser Island, Queensland Australia, largest sand island in the world Indiana Dunes National Park, Indiana Kenfig Burrows, Wales Marjum Burrows, Wales Merlot Sand Dunes, Newcastle, Co Down, Northern Ireland Morfa Harlech Sand Dunes, Gwynedd, Wales Newborough Warren, North Wales Oregon Dunes National Recreation Area, near North Bend, Oregon Penhale Sands, Cornwall, England Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, Michigan Sandy Island Beach State Park, Richland, New York Studland, Dorset, England Thy National Park, North Denmark Region, Denmark Winterton, Norfolk, England Woolacombe, Devon, England Enislas Sand Dunes, Wales Topic. Extraterrestrial dunes Dunes can likely be found in any environment where there is a substantial atmosphere, winds, and dust to be blown. Dunes are common on Mars and in the equatorial regions of Titan. Titan's dunes include large expanses with modal lengths of about 20 to 30 km. The regions are not topographically confined, resembling sand seas. These dunes are interpreted to be longitudinal dunes whose crests are oriented parallel to the dominant wind direction, which generally indicates west to east wind flow. The sand is likely composed of hydrocarbon particles, possibly with some water ice mixed in. Topic. See also. Antidune Barchen Devil's Stovepipe Erg Landform Ice Dune List of Landforms Masera Medanos Sand Dune Stabilization Sandhill Singing Sand Strand Plain Sand Wave Notes <laughs>